Okay, in the last video, I told you that something crazy like <clears throat> red blood cells were like wolves and uh, what was I talking about? Okay, this is one of my analogies. So maybe it's useful, maybe it's not. But remember that red blood cells, even though they are technically living cells, they don't use very much energy because they're not doing very much. <clears throat> they are mostly a bag of hemoglobin, a fancy bag of hemoglobin that is carrying oxygen around through the body. And I told you that there's no nucleus in red blood cells. Well, the reason there's no nucleus is red blood cells are not actively making new proteins, <clears throat> so they don't need their DNA anymore. They've gotten rid of it, right? And then I told you that red blood cells also don't have mitochondria. That's what this is about. Uh, red blood cells don't have mitochondria because mitochondria, they use up oxygen. And when they use up oxygen, they're actually really efficient when they're using up oxygen uh, to make energy, <clears throat> but they still are using up oxygen. And so I look at red blood cells because they have no mitochondria. They are kind of like um, wolves when it comes to, they are kind of like wolves when it, when it comes to um, oxygen. Um, what I mean is, if you had a load of hay like this, and you wanted to hire someone to drive it across the country, um, would you hire a wolf or would you hire a cow? Now, I know you're probably thinking, Tydell, I would hire a human being because neither of those other things can drive, but stick with me, right? If you were to drive, hire a cow to drive your hay across country, then every time the cow uh, got tired a little bit and wanted to stop and stretch his little legs, he probably would eat a mouthful or two of your hay. So by the time that load of hay got to the other side of the country, there's going to be a whole lot of hay missing. Well, this is like most of your cells that have mitochondria. They can use oxygen, the oxygen being analogous to the hay. But red blood cells are kind of like wolves, right? Wolves don't eat hay. Wolves don't even know why you would want any hay. That's the way red blood cells are. Red blood cells don't have mitochondria, no mitochondria. Since they don't have mitochondria, they don't use oxygen. So the entire load of hay, oxygen, is going to make it to its destination. All right, let's talk a little bit now about anemia. Anemia, and you should know this exact definition, anemia is a low amount of hemoglobin in the blood. Now, this is a typical picture that you will see whenever you see a discussion of anemia. And it is true that if you don't have enough red blood cells, right, then you will not have enough hemoglobin. That is true. However, anemia is an insufficient amount of hemoglobin, and there is one other way of being anemic. It is possible to have a completely normal amount of red blood cells. Maybe I'll change the color here. Yeah, it's possible. No. Laser pointer, okay. It's completely possible to have a normal amount of red blood cells, but if each red blood cell only has half as much hemoglobin in it as it should, you would still be anemic. You should remember that, particularly for nursing or PA programs. That's one of those kind of questions that they will ask you. Now, if you don't have enough hemoglobin, then oxygen cannot travel efficiently through your blood. So if you do not have enough hemoglobin, for whichever reason, you will not be able to transport an adequate amount of oxygen in your blood. So here are the symptoms of anemia. Pallor, let me just say something about pallor. You know, we have a tendency to describe pallor as being someone looks pale. Not exactly, okay? Now, the kind of pallor that comes with anemia is not whether you're more tan or less tan right? You don't become less tan. Your skin doesn't become lighter because you are anemic. That's not what it is. Pallor refers to the absence of the red color 
um, in our skin that we come to identify as being kind of normal skin tone. Here's what this means. This means that no matter um, whether someone has got pale skin like mine or darker skin like my friend Julie, no matter what color skin they have, you will notice something called pallor, not because someone looks paler, but because someone looks more green. And you probably have seen people that look a little bit green. Sometimes when people are getting cancer treatments, they will become anemic and then they will have a green look to them. It turns out that humans with no blood in their blood vessels, we look a little bit green. And it's taking the green that we kind of naturally are and then adding the red from our hemoglobin that turns our skin color the sort of flesh tone that we're used to seeing. So whether someone has got dark skin or light skin, unless their skin is tremendously dark, you will notice the pallor of anemia because they will start to look a little bit green. Now, these other symptoms, weakness, tiredness, and unable to exercise without getting out of breath, that is because there's not enough hemoglobin in the blood. And actually, you probably have experienced what it's like to um, be relatively anemic. Down here at sea level, it doesn't take that much hemoglobin to transport all of the oxygen that your body needs. But if you go up to a higher altitude, like you go up to Big Bear, for example, if you go up to a high altitude, you are anemic. I know, but, uh, but you may have noticed that when you're at a high altitude and you just go up a couple of flights of stairs and you're a little bit of out, of out of breath and your heart's really pounding, that's because for that altitude, you are relatively anemic. And that's what people with anemia would experience as well. What about being at high levels? Well, down here at sea level, we only have as much hemoglobin as we need. If you were to go up to Big Bear and stay up there for a week or so, you will have more drops of hemoglobin in every drop of blood than you do down here at sea level. And by the way, if you're ever preparing to run like, I don't know, a marathon or something like that, if you spend the week right before the race running around up in Big Bear, then you actually will come down here, you'll have more red blood cells for every drop of blood, and you'll have a little bit more endurance because your blood will be able to carry more oxygen. Helpful tip for those of you crazy enough to run a marathon, right? Let's talk about the causes of anemia. There are basically two, diff two basic ways that anemia happens, okay? Way one that anemia happens your body is not making a normal amount of red blood cells or not making a normal amount of hemoglobin, okay? So way one is not enough red blood cells are being made every day. We'll get back to that. The other way is red blood cells are being lost too fast. So it could be that your body has got the normal capacity to make red blood cells, but your body is losing them so fast that you are becoming anemic, all right? So two different ways. Let's talk about them in detail. So inadequate erythropoiesis means not enough red blood cells are being made. Inadequate hemoglobin synthesis is maybe there are plenty of red blood cells, but not enough hemoglobin is being made. Let's talk about a rare condition, but one that is very dramatic, called aplastic anemia. Aplastic anemia can just happen. Um, it sometimes can be caused, there was an antibiotic that's no longer on the market that could just sometimes cause people's bone marrow to just quit making red blood cells, okay? That would be aplastic anemia. Aplastic anemia is very difficult to treat, but we do have a solution for it. Um, you also will see an, a type of aplastic anemia if a person has got leukemia. If a person has leukemia, that is cancer of the bone marrow, and then the bone marrow, the red marrow, will be so busy making a certain type of white blood cell that it kind of squeezes out all the production of red blood cells. So that's another cause of anemia. We're going to be talking about this hormone, erythropoietin, 
Erythropoietin is a hormone that is made by the kidney. If you don't have erythropoietin, your bone marrow doesn't make enough red blood cells. People with kidney failure can sometimes develop anemia because they have inadequate erythropoietin. Now, then there are nutritional problems. These nutritional problems, uh, for a, a few decades in the United States, these nutritional problems were very uncommon because of the way humans were eating in the United States. Um, it, in, it, during that period of time, when Americans were eating a really a lot of, of red meat, a lot of meat in general, particularly a lot of red meat, you saw almost no anemia. And that is because red meat is a very good source of vitamin B12, and it's a very good source of iron. Okay? Now that people are conscious of other health problems that can be caused by red meat, uh, we are eating less red meat. And then there are some individuals who don't eat any meat at all um, because they've become uh, vegetarian or even vegan. Um, when people are vegetarian or vegan, it is less intuitive that they eat a diet that gives them adequate iron. Um, I'll give you an example. I remember that for a while when I was in high school, I became vegetarian. How did I become vegetarian? Well, I just quit eating meat. And you might think, okay, that's a normal way to become vegetarian. Well, if you don't eat meat and you eat the rest of the time like a typical high school teenager, what did I eat? Well, I did have some peanut butter sandwiches. Um, there might have been a little bit of iron in there, um, but mostly it was like potato chips and French fries and green salads. And there was no iron in my diet, okay? So of course I developed anemia. So uh, let me make it clear that I do believe that a vegetarian diet is definitely more healthful in many regards than a typical meat eating diet, but you got to pay attention to what you're eating. You can't eat like a typical American and just take out the meat and think you're gonna be healthy. What about vitamin B12? You know what, for the longest time, I thought all of the B vitamins were only found in vegetables, but it turns out that vitamin B12 is almost not in vegetable foods at all. It's found in animal products. So if you're a vegetarian, but you eat plenty of cheese, you're probably getting plenty of vitamin B12. But if you're vegan and you don't eat any animal source cheese at all, you could end up with a, well, actually you will end up with a vitamin B12 deficiency unless you take a vitamin B12 supplement. And there are vitamin B12 supplements that are made specifically for vegans. So make sure you take them if you're vegan. Right? Let's talk about one more thing. Let's talk about intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor. When we get to the digestive system, we will talk about intrinsic factor again. But intrinsic factor is a molecule that is made by cells in your stomach. And though that molecule that's made by cells in your stomach gets put out into your stomach where it will bind to vitamin B12 and when it binds to vitamin B12, that vitamin B12 can be absorbed into your bloodstream. If you have no intrinsic factor being made, you will end up with no vitamin B12 absorbed into your bloodstream. So if you don't make intrinsic factor, you will get a vitamin B12 deficiency. And this can happen particularly in the elderly. It is very treatable. It just means grandma needs an injection of vitamin B12 once a week for a while and then once a month for the rest of her life, All right? And I think, I think that, I think that is going to be the end of this particular, no, it's not gonna be the end of this lecture. Let's just talk a little bit about this test called a hematocrit. Hematocrit, or the cool kids on TV call it a crit on the medical show, is also known as the same test called a Paxil volume or a PCV. And what is it? I told you a while ago that blood 
can be spun down in a centrifuge so that all the cells are at the bottom and all of the plasma is at the top. That is the fastest, easiest way of determining whether someone is anemic or not. Uh, I say fastest and easiest. This is with very low tech equipment. Now, if you go into the Red Cross uh, trailer to donate blood, they actually uh, test how much hemoglobin you have available um, in a really fast and easy way too, okay? Remember that there are two ways of being anemic. Boom. One is to have not enough red blood cells. The other is to have a normal, a normal number of red blood cells and each red blood cell is only half filled with hemoglobin, you will still be anemic, right? Uh, the red blood cell count and the hematocrit, those two things together let you know how much hemoglobin per cell and what the volume is of hemoglobin per cell. On any kind of complete blood count, there are like one, two, three, four, I don't know, there are like five or six, maybe seven different tests specifically to test you for anemia, right? We will start here on the next 